So I did a video yesterday afternoon and then I was still out at the lake and I tried to download, it's been trying to download for all since yesterday. It won't, it won't even go. So I was like, man, is it the internet? <laughs> She's like, no, I have horrible service out here. There's no uh, service. And so I, um, I thought, well, I'll just keep trying. I can't even watch TikToks, nothing, nothing will work. A TikTok will go for like one second, stop, one second, stop, it's annoying. And um, the, the thing I went on yesterday and tried to look uh, for a while and just see if there was anything going on, but oh my God, I just see like four videos in 10 minutes or something. And, um, but the video, and I forgot to say anything about this, and I wasn't thinking about it going so big when it did, even though it's kind of like every time you see something, it's like, ooh. But then all of a sudden, it's like everybody starts talking about it. And so, um, you got the, the um, Ballard that's got everybody twisted, arguing, division, as usual. It's the only thing. It's like everybody just fucking, it, it's going to play out. Like, there's nothing to argue about. We'll see. And, and you know, like, if I say stuff like that to my mom or whatever, she's, she's giving up hope, like, I've seen. Like, she thinks, well, maybe, you know, like, well, she's pretty sure she's going to rapture it any second. <laughs> so, that's all she's banking on. And, uh, I wonder what church is like right now, you know? Do they all just go in and just, ah, oh, well, we're going to be up there raptured in, here in a couple weeks, so... Uh, you got any plans? What's going on with you? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't get it. I just seriously don't. It's just something that I've never, I mean, this has always been something between my mom and I. Like, I wonder when you trace it back to past lives and stuff, her belief in religion and my belief in, I don't know, myself. I don't know what else to say about it. I guess it would be myself because that's all it sounds like to other people when I'm, you know, my guidance and stuff. And it, it's also trippy because, you know, for how many years and years, you know, when I've said what I'm told, and it's just like, you know, oh, you can't talk to people on the other side. That's the devil. It's like, mm -hmm. is it? And then, um, there's just been all these things where I've tried to be like, yeah, but religion doesn't make any, that, that has always gotten me, that just blew, that was just, I, I guess these are triggers, see, and I'm not falling apart or anything, it's just like going through it and coming into, you know, re resolution, somehow I can move my arm again, <laughs> uh, into resolution or something, it is, um, it's like talking yourself through it. It's just like something comes and it's like, I mean, with her and I, you know, uh, it's so funny too. It's because when I came, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, we're going to have so much to talk about with so much going on, you know. But then her attitude had changed a lot with, you know, I don't want to think about it, I don't want to talk about it, I don't, you know, I'm not watching Fox, I just want to, you know, live my life. And, but it's it's still living it in the in the three D. It's, it's just saying okay, it's okay. Uh, like right now, uh, over here in Washington State, there's a thing about you know same thing as everywhere. We can take your kids if you don't let them, or if you do let them. <laughs> it's like a weirdo world. I mean, I'm in a state that if your kids want to, which the teachers all tell them to. If your kids want to become somebody different, then, uh, and you're not supportive of that, the state, then come in and take them. And so, you know, uh, the church and stuff is outraged, and my mom and her friends and whatnot. So she said, you know, I have a, a what you call it for you to sign, a petition. We're trying to get it on the ballot and, you know, go against it. And I said, I think it already went through. I've seen people talking about it. And she goes, well, whatever's going on with it, we're trying to get it off or removed or whatever it is. It, this is, you can't have this. And I'm like, yeah, but doing that is giving them power. 
but you, you you keep acknowledging them and taking a knee. Well, please, please, you know, just let us have these rights. Can we just do this? Please, please, government. And it's like, I'm past that. Like, I'll sign it for you because I know it's important to you and I'll sign it. And I, but that, to me, the shift is to stop acknowledging them, to stop giving them our power, stop telling them, okay, well, you ha do have a say over us, so let's negotiate. It's like, fuck you. You don't have a say over shit. You're self-appointed. Fuck off. I don't need your shit. So, yeah. And I think a lot more people, I'm just a little head because I woke up sooner. Everybody else is just not doing it. But I think everybody's going to get where I'm at. Like, fuck that shit. I don't need no fucking... And besides, it's going to give them no choice because they're all going to be in jail. Who's going to govern you then? Like, if you're desperate to be governed, it's like the whole fucking world is so desperate to be uh, shown or something. Oh, my gosh. See, I'm in some sort of time loop. I swear to God. It says six minutes, and I feel like, I don't know. I've lost all grip on time, I swear to God. Oh, like, time is so insignificant. Time is such a, it's, it's like a decoration. It's, it's so, it's so, um, there is no validity to it. It's, it's just a way to chop up things in your life, make it into chapters or something. But then it is like a part of the 3D constraint where people get too wrapped up in it, scheduling their lives. And the people, you know, in charge use it against the people and they get all wrapped up in it. But it's so crazy how all these things create so much more tension and chaos in the being. And the being is now, that's that's one thing. That's what they always are. The being, the being. And it's like, oh, okay. The being. We are the being beings we are becoming being like it's uh, it's so funny guys like you can hear these words and these words but sometimes that's what i'm saying like when they come in and they tell you something or show you something it's it's just it has more meaning it has more impact or something and it I, was something i don't know last night when i was going to bed i, I was laying on the couch it was going to sleep. I, I've had the roughest time of sleeping in so long, man. So toss and turning. Last time I was really tossing and turning. Um, but anyways, when I was so, and it, it just seems like I'm always talking to him. It seems like I'm never as quiet. It seems like sometimes my brain isn't as aware or something because it's resting. But it's, but it's, there's another part of it that is always aware. Because it never seems like it stops. It seems like it's always talking, always talking, always talking. Um, and, uh, this has got to be like why people will always be like, you're, just, you're so heavy. You're so dark. Not dark. I don't know. If, I don't think it, maybe probably somebody has ever said dark to me. Dark. No, I don't know heavy, deep. That's always the thing. It's like, man, why do you gotta think about such heavy shit, man? That's deep. I don't wanna... Or some people, the ones I like, right? The ones like, yeah. Whoa, yeah, you know what else? That's why me and my son-in-law voice, because he, he, him and I can do that back and forth and back and forth and talk like on a deeper kind of like, what did you think about this? Well, what about that? It's like, I love those conversations. I don't understand why not everybody does, but, you know, I, but I guess, like my mom, my daughters, all these people are always telling me, I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to know about that. It scares me. It makes me nervous. It makes me worry. And, you know, my thing, especially to anybody who consider themselves God-connected, it's like, well, that's your challenge to work on it because how can you be fearful? And that is the thing that gets me, like all these people who claim to be so close to God through Christianity or religion or whatever, and they're all, you know, if, if, I don't know. To me, it's living in fear. Uh, I think it's living in fear to run down, you know, like when people are saying, Jesus is coming, get yourself right now, run down and get baptized, because that's the, the, uh, the end, and then, you know, my mom 
it's like, well, everybody has sin. It's just when you say, uh, Jesus, forgive me of my sin, then you are free of your sin. Everybody else has to carry their sin. It's like, well, I don't know. I don't waste uh, in my perspective of sin is different than my perspective is lessons and learning and growing and excelling and expansion and stuff like that. So I don't live in a perspective where we got this one time shot and we got it, you know, it's not even like do the right thing. Like you can fucking run over some quails and get in a car wreck and go straight up. So look, I don't know. It's the strangest perspective to me of, you know, what we're doing here. And where we're going it's like okay that makes no sense to me not one not not, not even the tiniest iota does that make sense to me in my soul and it, the other thing that always trips me up too is because um you know i mean i've been told you know talking to the devil well, that's not real or whatever and uh, that's I mean, that's not real that's not real uh, you know or you just have an imagination or whatever and then um oh uh, what was the other thing because it's always that you know like i live in this unreal world or something and the things i say even if it because sometimes i'll say something and she'll just stop and look at me like it's got to be processing but then it falls back to programming. So it's planting a seed. You know, when things start to unfold, those seeds will pop up and be like, uh, I think. And it's, it's tripping me out too. It's like I can see leading up to what's coming. I can see, like, not just through people. It's like I can, it's like when I'm talking to somebody, it's like everything is exposed. There's no, like, to me, it's like, it's not hiding, you know, and I don't feel like I'm hiding. Like, I don't feel like I can hide. Like, the shit just comes out of my mouth. And it's like, you know, I gotta accept myself and be myself. That's one thing, too, is always, since I was a kid, I've always just blurted shit out. I've, n I've never had a filter. That was something I was always, you never, have a, you don't have a filter. The same with my face, too. You're like, well, you don't hide your emotions. Your face says everything, and it's like, well, <laughs> yeah, well, I, it's weird because, you know, when you become an adult, you're like, well, isn't it supposed to? Especially after we're talking about all these people who inject their faces to death, and then, um, but it's funny because when you're a kid or something, or when you're younger, you think like, well, is something wrong with me? Everything is like, oh, is something wrong with me? It's so weird how when we come into this, everything is trying to figure out who we are and how we work and what, you know, it, and then how it's so interfered with. It's just that, that is, I swear to God, that is what I say all the time. But it is like, I can see leading up to this, what is in the people that needs to come out. Like, it's like the thing I see is like the thing I think they're going to have to process in their shift or something. It's, you know, and it's all attachments to the 3D. And so, you know, I just would be telling people, you know, if you really, you know, taking it serious, you know, and you're really trying to work on your shit and you don't want to be just bombarded like so many people are going to be, then um, just keep, keep on top of it. And it's not like you have to do anything. It's not like you have to go and... You know, I'm going to get out the book today and see what can I work on. It is good to read self-help books, though, I tell you. Self-help books are like seed planters, and it's at your own pace. And you don't have anybody, I mean, you're reading what somebody else's perspective is, but you have your own, it is a lot more of a, yeah, it's weird, because it's kind of like, there's something, like if a counselor, there's an interference, something about words or the voice or something, language, the submission or something. It's a lot easier to lose yourself with someone telling you or something. But when you're reading, it is your, it's your own thing to 
to acknowledge or absorb or whatever. It's, it's more private, more of you than somebody else. Because always listening to somebody else will always interfere in, um, and always looking to somebody else to see if you're crazy. You know, you, when you go in, if you go to a counselor, it's really important to just figure out like what it is you're trying to work on and stay on that. But so many times counselors, you know, they'll either build you up when they shouldn't build you up or they'll take you down when you shouldn't be taken down. Because it's all based on their lens of how they see the world, be what they've gone through. And you don't know, maybe you're just like their mom. So they're going to fix you the way they needed to fix their mom. So that's the thing is why it's really important for you to really be your own advocate, you know, but I'm not going to shame somebody who goes to counseling because it's a definite step in the right direction. So, but it is, you know, just having the awareness of yourself and going and approaching life every day in that new way, you will find that you are uh, doing better, just like, you know, these, challenge, these things, like coming here, like, you know, I think old Kelly would have not held her tongue and would have probably, you know, like when I was in the car after she said that about the people hitting the question, she knew how I felt about it. There was no hiding it. I was like, oh my God. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. Oh, shit. I was like, fuck. Oh, fuck. No, no, I can't. I don't, there's. I would never, ever, ever desire to sit anywhere with these people who just have no caring about life or other beings or, no, no, I don't want to hang out with them. No, thank you. Especially if you don't want to spend eternity singing songs with them. Let's harmonize. Oh my God, I've got nothing in common with you. To me, it's like people who are like that, they've got to connect. They gotta connect to life, connect to themselves, connect to the world, connect to the other beings. It's a disconnect. And that's why, you know, and the rapture is like, fuck, that is, man. Because what have I said the whole time? That is like the, the negative, the low vibration. And that is a disconnect. That very well be. You know, I don't know who's gonna rapture out. I don't know who will gonna leave suddenly like that but supposedly you know it's in a lot of prophecy that there's it's been in movies and shows and shit that show the leftovers um i think that's from a book or something too but um now everybody is just and it could be any time the crazy thing is is that i think that's the thing that's going to be really uh well, I mean, for some of us who are sitting here, like, waiting and waiting and watching and watching and looking like the most paranoid, crazy people in the world. And then the other people are just, you know, going about their business. But when it happens, it's going to just be such a, I don't know. You know, it's hard to say how any of this stuff is going to go. And it's so weird how slow, how slow everything is leading up to it. And is it like this preparation, like to get us kind of like, you know, I mean, they know what they're doing. They've always known what they're doing. And so we have two opposing forces though. So if the, if the light the side is doing the same kind of thing and like re unpro reprogramming, and that's why it's going so slow. And that's why, you know, certain things are released the way they're released and then go more or something. It is that, that kind of, um, like they're trying to reprogram or trying to take, I don't know. I, I, I really think it's for a reason. I don't think it's not for a reason. And I don't think it's just because, uh, like how Juan used to say they had to wait for 71% of the people. I think that's already in the 71%. Mom said, that the other day there was a Trump rally. He's like really out there doing the circuit. Oh, and this was another one where I, she was, I said, oh, there's another girl like me who talks about the money thing. And she went to a Trump rally the other day and she was so upset. She was just like, oh my God, this is depressing. Like uh, everybody is just like oblivious. 
and everybody's like, this is real. Like, they're all just planning on the election 2024. Like, that's their whole goal. It's one and a half years. We'll get this done, you know? Like, it, like it worked out last time? Like, what? <laughs> I don't understand. But, so she was really bummed. And she's like, oh my God, they're going to drag this out so much more. Are we going to have to go through the whole goddamn election? And so I said that to my mom and she goes, oh yeah, we're going to for sure. I'm like, we're going to go to 2024. Nothing's going to happen until then. And I'm like, oh, I think it's more likely the cataclysm is going to be then. I think shit's going to start going down. Like, um, I think shit's going to start. I mean, they can't drag it out. Like, it's, like, there's other beings and stuff. Like, this is way bigger. Like, stuff has to start going. I think it's going slow, but it's going to start rolling faster, like a snowball, and gaining momentum or something, going downhill or something. And, uh, but I think it's way past 71%. My mom said the other day that they said there were 75,000 people at this Trump rally, and they were making such a big thing. And I think that's kind of just keep letting us know the numbers, even though they keep trying to hide the numbers, the mainstream, whatever. <laughs> Fucking Rachel Maddow, she's such a ditz. Or I don't even know if it's a girl, I think it's a guy. But whatever. She's just a raunch. But she, um, uh, whatever, Trump was saying a bunch of good stuff the other day, so they had to cut it out. So I saw somebody sharing a clip about her saying, it, it just talking the whole nonsense about him. It's like, girl, what did you do? Or boy, or whoever the hell you are, what did you do? And and you got you're in trouble, like whatever. Um, or maybe she is just playing a role, and she's gonna come out as a good guy. Maybe she's gonna yank off a mask. Who knows? But she was talking about you know how horrible he is, what a liar, and they can't even show his uh, his stuff he says because he's so deceitful and stuff. Yeah, we weren't, we're not going to let you guys decide for yourself if they're lying. We're going to just tell you. As far as we're concerned, we're not going to, we don't, and I think that's MSNBC, so they won't uh, just come right out and say, you know, you can't hear what he says because we're not going to let you. We're going to just tell you what we think about it. It's like, oh, okay, good. Because your opinion doesn't matter shit to me. You're fucking, she's, uh, these people are so fucking progressive and liberal. Like, why are you, fuck, like, I'm not like you. I don't think it's a good idea for all the people who not have genders and shit. I think that's stupid. So, fuck off with your shit. Like, I'm not one of you. So, I'll make my own clarifications for myself. And, um, oh yeah, the video that everybody is freaking out about is the airplane one. I mean, it's so crazy that people are just like, okay, you guys, when the video goes this crazy, then it's time to realize that they're pushing it. Like I said, they, they censor me. Like yesterday, it was so funny too. Because my TikToks did go on. It took a long time, but I did a couple of TikToks. I did three, I think. And uh, I was, uh, one of them was like uh, four seconds or something. So it went on, it took a while. But anyway, it took them a while. I got three on there. And it was like in fucking 10 minutes, 10 minutes after they were on there, all their views were completed. They'd all reached their two over 200 views and they all just dead ass stopped. It's like, fuck, it's so annoying. It's so fucking annoying. And then in the videos I saw, somebody was saying, oh yeah, now social media is no longer allowed to censor us in America. Okay. Okay, I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> but the when they push a video, that's when you gotta be like, okay, why do they want us all to see this? Why do they want us all to talk about this? Is this like a, a soft open? Is this uh, just a distraction? Is this, you know, I, I don't know. As some of the videos, you know, when people keep pointing things out, you know, it's all these other people that point out things, you know, or go in and like do research and to me, yeah, the Tim Ballard one, the way that one fell it together, that was universal. That was a universe. That was God's hand. Because the, the person who was doing the videos on all of the pedos and just getting all these records and showing people on, um, had no idea who the guy was. 
when she put it out there who was in was and then you have the whole group of people who keep going in and putting the two faces together saying they don't look alike look at this they don't look alike and then other people getting them and going they look alike look at this look at they look alike and to me i say they look alike and then plus when you do all the thing and go into work for the cia homeland security and it's like i don't i don't know i think on the one tim kind of disappeared and then the the government issued became the other one and so it's like when you go and do research one kind of just disappears but the other one becomes so um, i don't know I, it's, I guess like they don't put concern about like using their real name because once you're in with the government they'll cover your ass and I just still like that is such a good point. Yeah, if this movie is in all disclosure, then why isn't it disclosing who the buyers are? Like, who's the who's the who's the ones running the show? Fucking government. Um, but the girl on the plane, she. Um, I, I mean, you can tell she's maybe had one or two drinks, and she's got that kind of. I don't know. There's like a. A voice thing. I think people's voices do. I mean, it's not slurring, but it's just that something happens when people drink alcohol. It just does something with their uh, slows their talking somehow or something. I can tell. And so I could tell that she had drank some, but she didn't seem like drunk. She seemed nervous. But the other thing was, is I saw a video of the guy who was sitting next to her on the plane. So there was a guy. So they're at the very back of the plane almost. And the woman is, so there's a guy in the, in the window seat and he has a hood on and never speaks, never speaks a word. The woman sitting next to him, she is talking to him in a conversation. Like she responds. And so the guy sitting across the aisle is noticing, but he's like reading or something. The plane hadn't taken off or anything. They're still sitting there waiting when people are loading. So he just keeps noticing like, that's weird. Um, you know, he may be thinking like, how annoying. Glad she didn't sit next to me. She just keeps talking. and But he kept thinking it was weird. The whole thing, it just seemed weird. The guy, the whole thing seemed weird, he said. And then, Stella, please stop it. Stop. She's really gotten used to cats on this video though. And so, um, the, uh, the woman, she's sitting there talking to him and all of a sudden she gets up, darts up to the front of the plane and starts telling everybody the motherfucker in the back of the plane is not real. You got, I'm getting off this plane. This, this motherfucker's not real. And so there's one part in the thing, Stella, come here and stop it, please. There's one, she's probably crying at a dog or a cat sitting like she's at the French doors. So the one video, I'll stop in a second, oh, damn it. One video, she is pointing up and in her other hand, two fingers down. So just by chance, just by chance, like, I mean, it could be. But then again, I would say that's a universal action then like, what's the chances? Like, so funny yesterday, my mom was telling me about all these coincidences. And I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. That's just crazy. But so, she did one up, two down. So she's sitting there, and you can't see me, but, uh, you know, she's like, has her bag, and she's like, winning like, God, what the fuck about there? It's not real. And she has two fingers down. And so somebody's like, that's a fucking, that's a psyop. There's something, what's going on here? Because that, she's a, as above, so below. And that's the sign. And so they're like, why, why is she doing that? What's the chances of that? So, you know, is she hired? It was the guy back there, MK Ultra in her? Or, you know, was she like, I don't know. The guy sitting there said, it was really weird because she went up there and started doing all that. And he was thinking, she's not drunk. I haven't seen her drink at all. And people were saying she was drunk and stuff. And he's like, she's not drunk. And then um, he looks over at the guy. And the guy looks over at him. And I guess the guy has, he's kept saying something about like, he had pretty eyes or something. 
it's like he kept his hood on because he's, oh my gosh, Lois, if you're playing with this little tiny dog, it's like a pound. This dog is so fucking tiny. And, um, here it comes, I'll show you. Um, this dog, it's so tiny. Um, it's climbing all over me all night. I couldn't even feel it. Yeah, it's so, um, uh, so he said that when he looked over at the guy, that the guy looked over at him and winked and smiled. It was like, but he said the weird thing was, he said, I looked at him and it, it kind of gave me a weird feeling. And then I just kind of looked away, but he said, it took me a second until I realized that his wink went this way. It didn't go this way. He goes, I'm just fucking weirded out. Like some, some weird, like, I don't know what the hell. He says, like, something's weird. So that was another guy on the plane who was sitting next to the woman. So that's a confirmation. Some, and so, you know, our um, people traveling on planes now with, you know, other beings and the other beings can't hide themselves either. And people are going to have to come to realize or is there some other beings that are negative entities that are trying to MK Ultra people or something? And I, I have no idea, but... I mean, there's something about that, and it could just be a another distraction. It could just be, oh my God, you should see this over here. Stella, this 175-pound ginormous dog has this little tiny. I don't know. I think she's like two and a half or five pounds or something. She's so small. She feels like nothing. <coughs> Pick her up. She feels like, like a little fluffy air ball. Oh my she's cute. <laughs> Last time when I came, my mom had just gotten her. I was always rescuing these dogs. She's, she's, she's a rescue. This is sad, sad too, is because um, she's a couple litter. The people's a dog. They had them for nine years, and then and the dogs love their families, and then they're just like, well, we can't keep them anymore. I'm just giving them all. My mom's always getting the dogs that are in cats have cancer and issues, and it's just and um, uh, <laughs> yesterday. I've told her, you know, write up your proposal. You gotta get your proposal going because you've got a lot of stuff you need to do around here. And and you do animal rescue, and that's what they want. If they want human people who are doing humanitarian projects are gonna get all the money you want. You go in and whatever you want. You go in there and you know, go big. Don't sit here and go small. And it's like this is about what you want, what you desire and stuff. And so I thought I'd made all that clear. And she said she had her proposal. And then that was like a month ago or whatever. So we're sitting outside yesterday. And she's with this above ground pools. And over there. And she's talking about this neighbor who now has moved and started building a house right next to hers. So he went way back on his driveway. And so and she's like, ah, oh, kind of disappointed because he's building this house so close to hers. And so uh, she was talking about, you know, her pool being right there and the privacy and stuff. I said, well, isn't it in your proposal? And she's like, well, no. I'm like, oh, I told you, you got to put this stuff in your proposal. And she's just like, well, what? Like, uh, you know, like, what? I said, it doesn't matter, Mom. It isn't about that. There's, it, it doesn't have to do with the dogs or whatever. It's for you. Like, you you've got to be thinking that you know, I've been going through this for almost 80 years, just poisoning and shit and stuff. you got to be like, uh, you know, it, it's, they're giving back to you for what you've gone through. They're giving back to you. None of just load your account with a million dollars for you to run down to the store and shop. Besides, there's not going to be a lot of shops like that, but it is, um, they're giving you money for the things you want and need, the things that, to make your life better. And so you got to think of that, you know, put a fucking deck out there with this side, with a, you know, with a, a cool deck that has, you know, it's just so, I mean, this place grows so much stuff, but you could put a whole like side thing up with vines and shit all going down. You make something so cool. Like this is where you got to be thinking, not undercutting yourself. I mean, think about it, like if you're presenting to Trump, I mean, not really, but like it's that energy, like. You know, like, so she totally got that. Like, it's like, so you can go in and be like, well, you know, just give me a little. No. Is that what he would do? No. 
you want to, what you want, what you need, you deserve. You got to, and that's what everybody's got to get themselves in that position. And that I deserve what I want. I deserve what the life that I want and stuff like that. But most people think that they don't deserve much. They're asking too much. They can never get what they want. It's all in programming. And this is why it's reprogramming. And it's small things like that to think like, well, I do deserve the things that I want. I do deserve, I mean, uh, you know, having the pool right, you know, not having a broken jacket, like everything is like, mm -hmm. um, you can get all this stuff, you know. Well, you know, what about I have a, a construction person, you know, where am I gonna find? Don't worry, mom, it, it will all go just, but you can't get people who think that they gotta go and ask God and stuff to direct their energy to see like, you gotta focus on what you want. You have no way you deserve. You gotta heal the shit that you think, you know, that you don't deserve something that shit, you gotta heal. And, the, you know, you can get people that are here. And I, you know, it's crazy too. It's like, I, I didn't just come up with this shit on my own. Like, this is not something where, you know, I mean, this is something that is, I don't know, like, given, gifted, well, it does it really seem like a gift when, because I don't feel like I struggle with, like, what a lot of other people do, so it does feel like a gift to my own knowing, um, but to me, it's not coming out of a, a book that somebody else wrote and edited and, and nobody else trying to manipulate with me. Like, that's one thing, too, is, like, where people are starting to, you know, listen to the voices in their head, they gotta use discernment. Because you gotta realize that some of them are, there's, they're not all the same. It, but it's up to you to, to notice that, to realize that. Well, you know, it's getting cold. It's only been 37 minutes, but I'm gonna get outside and start painting, I think. But I really, this morning when I got up and it still hadn't downloaded, and just started back over. I was like, I just stopped it. And I was like, well, later on today when I get to my daughter's, it'll be in the city, so it'll be Wi-Fi. So I'll download this one and download that one. And um, so those two will be on there. And then I, it's, it's gonna probably just be hectic for the next couple of days till I get home. So probably, I mean, I'll try and, you know, come in and say something, but then I also, I don't know a lot about anything going on, well, you know, that is one thing, yeah, when I go to my, around other people, a lot of other people are on their phones all the time, so I'll go and I'll check my phone, I'm just sitting there, just not talking to anybody, just sitting there like, okay, everybody, what's going on with your phones, everybody, so, I don't know, a lot of people do that, but that's something, you know, everybody's got to just break on their own, and it is kind of like, it's like telling your mind, it's just mind control. It's taking the control back of your mind from who's been controlling it. It is like we all offered ourselves up in the birthing process to come in here and be, you know, guided or told, directed, misled. But it was the challenge, you know, it's the challenge. You know, can you find yourself when you're being misled? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, I can. I, I can. I mean, I did it when I was little, I think. Because I... I don't know. I, I can't... I, I don't know. I can't compare myself. But it's like... I mean, I know it's possible. Because I've been talking to them this whole fucking time since I was a kid. I left the church. I don't give my power to the book or any of that stuff. The, I don't know. It just seems so simple to see to me. But then, you know, I mean, why were they talking to me when I was little and everybody else thinks that's weird? Oh, but that, that you know, when my mom had, you know, I think it was 2021. It was when we started talking more in 2020, you know, and being more like getting over things, you know, just like trying to become, you know, 
to me it was like getting over my I don't know feeling like I don't know it was just those parent to parent to adult, child issues you know there's just stuff that's part of our growth it's part of what we're supposed to grow it's part of how we're supposed to heal and so that I was doing in 2020 and 20 sometime around then is that's when she told me that she felt so bad about you know, me as a child and she's asking her asking the angels or God or something you know why does that happen to kids or why did that have to happen to me or whatever and they said uh, they told her that they're never alone we're always there with them and stuff and so she had said something to me about that and I said yeah I know well, I've, I've never been alone I told you they're always talking to me and so I think that that messes with her head a little bit because she goes back and forth on that, you know? But I think it's just really hard for people to understand, like, that you're having communication with somebody outside of you in your head. But, I mean, when you're getting told things that you don't know in your head, then how, how, how else do you explain it? I'm sure there's other people who'd be like, well, it's part of my DNA, it's part of my hidden knowledge, it's all that stuff, but all that stuff is coming on. But it is, Uh, I don't know. Everybody can look at things how they want to look at them. I'm going to look at them the way I look at them. And these people, these beings have been talking to me since I was a kid. They're always talking to me. And the stuff they say is makes sense to me. And if it makes sense to you, then I'm here to share it with you. And if it doesn't, you know, then, you know, it's just that, that thing about our, our, the way we understand things. You know, how we see things, how we understand, and perception and perspective. And, you know, the way I see what life is about, what we're doing here, the expectation and everything is very different than a lot of people. So, you know, just uh, open your mind and figure your own out. Don't get stuck on how other people see things, you know, because it uh, can be depressing, man. If you were stuck on how, look, if, I, if the only way to see life was through religion I, I I don't even know like it just doesn't sit with me it doesn't fit it doesn't make sense to me I would probably just try to lock me up in a mental institute and I don't belong here try to go jump off a mountain and find my get in a spaceship or something I don't know I don't know what I would do like to me I'm just so excited it's changing because to me it's the end of the Piscean age and is it gonna be like Dependent Jesus dependencies, Robert. They just need to go to another village and work shit out so you can start being sovereign as a soul. So you're not a dependent on somebody else's energy. This is energy. And if you're dependent on someone else's energy, like, that's, uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I know how I see things. I know how. I'm showing things and now I see things and so it's just not going to stop. So anyways, I, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but I will get back to normal, um, you know, as soon as I get back. And then um, talk more about this and who knows, maybe some, today is, it, it, today's the 777 portal. Yesterday I saw this girl and she was like kind of laughing. She's like, I don't know what's going on with you people with this you know, these portals opening up all the time. Now we've got, we have the 555 portal. Now we got the 777 portal. Uh, and she goes, and y'all just try to make them fit and stuff. Because the 555 portal, you did, it was 5, 5, and then the 23. You just counted the 23. But now, all of a sudden, on the 777, you count the 2023. So, I don't know. You guys are just writing the rules as you go, I guess. I'm not sure. But that's the thing, is like... People who have been spiritual are in it. Like, I think she's probably like astrology or something like that. But people who have been into certain things, like when I, people start talking about reincarnation, start saying nonsense to me, it's like, what? Or alien stuff, like things that I've looked into, uh, spiritual things for 40 some years. Like, yeah, you know, there's more things to look into, like to understand them. Like, uh, I don't know. But when I hear people saying things that don't make any sense to you, I feel the same way. So, 
anyways, just keep looking into things, you know. Just appreciate the role of learner. I don't know why everybody wants to just go direct into teacher. Even when I was awake, I spent years in learner. Like, look, I was going to those meditation things. I was going out Reiki stuff. I was going to book and doing yoga. And I was going in um, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, you know, you got to get yourself involved in learning. And, you know, went to the chakra class. Went to, you know, just go and start learning. You don't have to go deep into everything. You know, you don't have to become obsessed with it. Just go out and start learning. But definitely reincarnation is um, something that, you know, is important to me to understand. But it's going to go by your own perspective. You know, you'll understand it on your level of understanding. So, you know, just, but that is a real thing. It's something that they hide from you. But it's something you should probably look into and it may really help you start to understand what the fuck you're doing here why you're going through what you're going through and the people you're going through it with you know and why there's problems to overcome and stuff so anyways just um you know it's it's more than just Dolores Cannon there's tons and tons of stuff out there about reincarnation so, you know, uh, all the stuff, mystical, and there's tons of channelers out there. You know, tons of people like me. I'm, well, I don't know, because that's why I, it threw me for so long, is because it was, you know, they were just talking to me. And the people who I would see doing it, they'd have to go into trances. They'd have to you know, do all this stuff. Like Daniel Scranton does all like this stuff, pulling in the energy to him. And, he's, and then he shifts into this other... Uh, being and so, so everybody has their different ways. I just uh, try and you know, whatever they're showing and telling me and stuff. I'm just uh, so, anyways. But there's tons of different people out there. Tons of different communication. Tons of different things. And just uh, you know, spend time in learning. Just absorbing information. And then spiritual, the spiritual realm. The whole thing is way bigger. You know, it's, it's huge. It's, it's expansive. It's all things. And so, the more you learn, the more it just will open you and open you and open you. And so, you know, allow yourself to open up to what's real. And, you know, don't restrict yourself and hold yourself back by what they tell you. And by the herd mentality of, you know, let's all stay here together. Let's, you know, break free break out and you know take a risk of having everybody you know look at you and laugh at you and call you crazy because that's just them locking in so that they have to look at themselves when the shift happens so they have to look at that part of themselves whatever it is like i don't know their intention it can it can be so many it's so variable everything is so variable so anyways stella's is not gonna stop and i'm gonna go get some more tea and get my ass out there and get to work so i will talk to you later bye